Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Eddie asked me some crazy questions about Jannah, so stay tuned, we'll discuss the answers. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. That's the best greeting that one can give. That's that greeting of peace. And this is what every Muslim is striving for peace. Peace with the Creator, peace within Himself, and peace with our brothers and sisters in humanity. This is what the Muslims are striving for. That's right. And a Muslim is simply one who adheres to what God Almighty, the Creator, the one God, the same God that Jesus worshipped, the same God that Abraham, Moses, all the messages of God, including the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they all came with the same message. It's one God, one recipient. That recipient is mankind. And God Almighty didn't send religions, He sent one religion, one way of life. And that's been that way of life that's been there since time immemorial. Islam, submission to the one God, and that's how you get peace. You already learned something. You're going to learn a lot more. You're going to learn a lot more about Islam and Muslims here on the Deen Show. So don't go nowhere. We have no Ali Khan. We're going to be talking about something that all the messengers of God brought, taught. We're going to be answering your questions, but I get kind of excited. We, ask, we talk about the questions and whatnot, and I, I want to ask them about paradise. Paradise. So we got your questions, and we got my question in the questions. So don't go nowhere. Another exciting episode of The Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean, you know. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Noman Ali Khan. It's good to be here. It's like yesterday, I was saying that you were here and time is flying and it's like it's gone and what do we got? <laughs> you know, alhamdulillah, we got some more time to do some more good. Inshallah, Inshallah Allah accept this from us. I mean, I'm really excited that you're here. We're going to get into answering that we did in our previous show mm -hmm. some questions. We get some of the viewers who write in, email in, and from time to time we'll answer some of their questions. People like these questions, you know, answering, taking the time to answer them. We don't do the fit questions, right? But we, we, we want to talk about just some basic things. But, you know, before that, I, I just want to open up. If you can, I've heard you myself talk about Jannah, paradise. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I think before we get into it, can you just, f for me, you know, uh, can you just spend a few minutes? Because every Muslim we know is one who submits to the will of God, yeah. to the one God, the same God that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad submitted to. And they all came with the same message, do God's will, not your desire. And they all came with the warning, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you know, follow your lusts and desires, you turn away from God, you're heedless. There's a hot place for you. But then they gave this reward, this paradise, that if you do good, you stand upon good. You love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And you do God's will. You got paradise. And I, I heard you and it touched my heart. And you talked about paradise, you know. And before we get into these questions, sure. I think it'd be motivating, you know, uh, to, to kind of uplift people's spirits. You know, sure. why they're doing this. Why are we submitting? Why are we doing this? You know, it's for, it's for paradise, isn't it? I want to say two quick things about yeah. hellfire first. Yeah. One of my favorite, two favorite ayat in the Quran. One of them is, "Ma yafalullahu bi adabikum." What's God gonna? What's God going to get out of punishing you anyway? What a beautiful thing for Allah to say. That's what Allah, the Creator, said. Allah said that. "Ma yafalullahu bi adabikum." What's He gonna do punishing you? So it's not. Why do you think He wants to punish you? He's not there to punish you. He terror. People have a. This sister came to me one time and she said, "Why does God talk so much about hell in the Quran? Is fire, burning skin, oil, this, that? Why? I'm so terrified of it. That's my problem with iman, with Islam, because it's so much talk about hellfire. I was like, would you rather hear about it, get scared, and get your act together, or be in it? Mm. Isn't it a mercy that he told me about it before I have to see it? True. True. Yes. He te he scared me out of my mind of that place, and then he told me, I didn't create you to punish you. <laughs> And I'm letting you know, look, this is a horrible place, don't go to it. It's like he opened two doors, and he showed me what's on behind both doors. And then he says, look, you have a choice to take whichever door you want. Now you're blaming him for showing you both doors? If he only showed you Jannah. And you say, it sounds nice, but 
I'll take my chances. <laughs> All right? And where you and he never told you about hell. He never told you. But you, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Whether you like it or not doesn't change reality. You could say, I, I don't like traffic. I hate it. That doesn't change the fact that it's still there. You're still stuck in it, buddy. Right? Whether you know about hellfire or not doesn't change the fact that it's there. It's coming. It's Allah's favor that He told us that it's there. And in another place He says, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقُ My second favorite ayah about this subject. He says, Accept the one your master shows mercy to. And by the way, that is why He created them. In order to show them mercy. Allah says in this ayah, the purpose for which He created us, on His end. On our end, the purpose of our creation, to worship Him. On His end, the purpose He created us, so He could show us mercy. SubhanAllah. What a beautiful, beautiful perspective on Allah. The first introduction we have to Allah in the Qur'an is that He's extremely merciful. People think of Islam, they start thinking of hellfire. First thing we should think is Allah wants excuses to show us mercy. Now, how is He did Allah make, our, our Lord make us to earn paradise? How many uh, opportunities? Before you get into that, you mentioned mercy. How many times, because it just popped in my head, and not to take you off, from the main question, mm -hmm. but you have a lot of opponents of Islam. They say exactly what you say that you know Allah is a vengeful God. He mm -hmm. just you know he's not loving. You know how many times is love actually mentioned in the Quran? Love is mentioned all over the place in the Quran. Actually, one time a Christian came to me and said, "Your God isn't love. Our God is love. Show me in the Quran where is God love." <laughs> I said, "Okay." I opened it up. Surah Al Buruj. Al Ghafurul Wadud. Allah says He's extremely forgiving and He's extremely loving. Amazing. He just walked away. We're like, where's the love, brother? <laughs> <laughs> right? But the idea is, it's, it is there. And it is a, it is a central con concept in our religion. But Allah calls it a two-way street. Like everything else. Don't take advantage of love. How many people are in a loving relationship, but at the same time it's abusive? They, she loves him, and he abuses her, but she still loves him. That love is abusive. And on the other hand, also, there are parents who get used by their children. Out of love. Right? It's an abusive relationship. Allah doesn't allow us to abuse our love of Him. It's a mutual exchange. I, I've heard, I know we don't liken the Creator to His creation, but I've heard an analogy made of a father. You love your father, but you got some fear there. You know what I mean? That's it correct. Ke keeps you in line, but it's not that your father, he, he loves you and you have this fear just to keep you on track. Mm -hmm. And it, on that idea of making comparisons between ourselves and the Creator, we don't compare anything to the Creator, but the relationship we have with the Creator can be compared. And Allah did that Himself. When so it's he okay to, to the make Relationships can be compared. Yeah. But then we say the way Allah does that is infinitely superior to this. Yes. This is what we can imagine. How, how much more is Allah Azza wa Jal? You know? Um, but now talking about paradise a little bit. You know, the, the thing that personally fascinates me about paradise this is just one thing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many descriptions of Jannah in the Quran, right? There's rivers flowing and cups being offered. I used to wonder, why are cups being offered? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Allah says, wa akwabun mawdu'a cups that are placed. What's the point of that? You ever throw a barbecue? You ever go to somebody's backyard and they're throwing a barbecue and they buy those cups from like Walmart and Costco and they're serving drinks or whatever? Mm -hmm. Right? That's a little, you know, homely party. You have to go pour your own drinks. You ever go to an expensive restaurant? Like a really elite restaurant? You gotta pay 50 bucks just to sit down? What, what do you see on the table before you even get there? Cups. This is 1400 years ago. Allah, know how we, Allah knows how we think. Mm -hmm. Allah says water flowing, rivers flowing. You ever been to the lobby of a very expensive restaurant, hotel? Mm. What do they have? You ever been to the CEO's office of a corporate executive, top floor in New York City? What do they have? Artificial waterfall. Same thing Allah described. You ever seen a commercial where they take you to go take a vacation in the Bahamas or take a vacation in, you know, Hawaii or something? Escape to paradise, it says. What do they show you? A palm tree, water, drinks. Relaxation. This yeah. is in the Quran, the verbatim word of God. This is. Well, these are the pictures they show you on TV commercials, right? Yeah. What is Allah describing? In this life? is what. But what, what, this is what Allah is. The way Allah. This is, is Allah, Allah describing water flowing, trees, fruit, drinks, people reclining and relaxing, enjoying each other's company. And you're looking at that and going, "Wow, these guys made a commercial about escape to paradise." And. It's like they read the Qur'an and made that. Because Allah knows who He's talking to, He knows what we want. He knows what we want. Now look at this, I don't even care about what religion you are. Everyone as they get, especially men, and even women, as they get older and older, you know what, there's one thing in our head? We can't, it's programmed, we can't even get rid of it. 
is the love of a beautiful house. You go through a nice neighborhood, what are you going to do? Wow, that's nice. Yes. Look at that yard. Oh my God. Oh my God, did you see that one? People can't help themselves. I don't care what religion, what background you're from. Everybody has desires to save up and have a stable place to live. They don't want to live on rent, they want to own a place. They want to have a nice house and they want it just the way they like it. What does Allah offer in paradise? <laughs> it's incredible. He says, I'll give you a house. And it'll have, what's the most expensive real estate in the world? Beachfront property. Manhattan is one of the most expensive cities in the world. What's the most expensive part of Manhattan? Anything that looks over to the water. Yes. And the higher up, the higher up, the more expensive. And Allah puts houses on top of mountains, mansions. They overlook the entire garden. They overlook the waterfall. These are things that Allah put inside our psyche. He wants us to desire these things in this world. So that when He talks about these much, the much superior version of that in the next world, that we're truly motivated. We say, if this mansion can exist here, oh my God, what does Allah have for me there? If this beautiful vacation spot, the oceans in California, the, the beaches in California, the canyons in Arizona, you know, the waterfalls in Arkansas, if that can exist here, what does Allah have for me in, in the Akhirah? What, is he, what, what amazing thing is He going to give me? You know? Amazing, amazing. We, we're gonna, um, I'm getting very excited. I love talking about Jannah, Paradise. We're going to talk some more and we promise to answer some questions of yours here on The Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. Okay, you've got your dream home and you've got your dream car, but you're going to get old and things are going to happen to you in your life. And then what have you got? At the end of the day, it's an empty dream that has no real foundation. We are going to die and we're going to meet our Lord and He is going to judge us. It becomes an obligation for each single human being to find out what the Quran is. Islam is telling us to stay away from things which are bad for your person and bad for the society. killing of innocent human beings. Human life is precious. This is the Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show with the CEO of Baina Institute, Noman Ali Khan, on the Dean Show. Back on the Dean Show, he has his own private section at thedeanshow.com. Alhamdulillah, you're back. I love you for the sake that. of... Huh? I didn't even know that. <laughs> yes, I'm really excited. <laughs> and uh, Alhamdulillah, inshallah. You got to, every time you're in Chicago, hopefully we can we can continue you having it. you back. Inshallah. We got it. Inshallah. All right. You got, you got my All right, right. my brother. All right. <laughs> okay. So listen, I'm very excited. Like I said before, that you know every time every every breath is is a blessing that the Creator has given us, and I love talking about Jannah Paradise. Before we go to the question, just just tell us. So to get Jannah, to get Paradise, what are the simple things that we have? is it something really that complicated? If you think about what are, what do we have to do to 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 achieve? Eternity, bliss, perpetual happiness. Does it ever get tired? Do you ever get tired, bored in Jannah? No, you don't ever get bored in Jannah. That's one of the joys of Jannah. You have beautiful company in Jannah. You know, over in this world, when we take a vacation, especially we take a vacation with the family, kids might love it. It's a nightmare for parents, right? Because they mm -hmm. take care of everything and this and that. When people get together for a break, like, you know, Christians get together for Christmas break, maybe families get together for Eid break or something. Fights break out, arguments happen. Things yeah. ha this is supposed to be a time of celebration. At the best celebrations. At the best celebrations, but when you're with others, and what happens? Arguments, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, this is, this is supposed to be a happy time. What happened here, <laughs> you know? Um, people crying at weddings and things like that, right? Uh -huh. They hear Allah says in Jannah, one of the great joys of it, first of all, boredom's taken away. Second of all, you get whatever you want. Third of all, ghil, this ill feeling towards each other is eliminated. We're not even capable of it in Jannah. You can't even say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. No more Xanax. It's, it's, it's gone. Go. <laughs> it's gone. So you only have this beautiful relationship. You know how sometimes husband and wife get into arguments and they don't even know where it came from. Like they're both confused. Like how did we end up here? How did this conversation even start? Why did it get so nasty? That Allah will take that ability away from us in Jannah. We can only have wonderful conversation. I have something I'm looking forward to. Like it, peace, being at peace all the time. You know when, when people are happy, they're sitting there, man, I wish life could be like this all the time. And they know it's not going to be. They know around the corner, a problem's coming. Migraine's coming, My, something's coming. Something's <laughs> coming, whether it's physical, emotional, something's coming. Just to know that there's nothing problematic coming. You know, one of my favorite, favorite places in, 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 mentioned in paradise is this guy who makes it to paradise, Surah Safat, he makes it to paradise. And he notices his friends sitting there and they're all just, Hey man, you made it too! And they're kind of congratulating each so other. So you'll be having those talks? Yeah, you're like, Oh my God, you're from there, you're from there! And we're just, 
getting to know each other all over again. I remember you. And then he wonders, what happened to my best friend? I don't see him here. So he, from way back in the day, back in this world, he remembers his one friend missing from this group. And he goes, would you like to know what happened to him? And nobody else volunteers. But he wishes to see his old friend. So imagine this, in Jannah, Allah opens a window so he can see his friend in hell. Okay, so this is a scene described in the 37th surah. So he looks at the guy burning in hellfire, his best friend. You get to see this now. You, see, you get to see this from Jannah. Because in Jannah you get anything you want, right? So he wanted to see his friend. Wish granted. You get a view into hellfire and you see your friend burning there. And he says, لَقَدْ كِتَّ تُرْدِينَ You almost made me fall off the cliff too, man. He looks at his friend, doesn't say, you okay, can I pull you out? He doesn't say that. He said, man, you almost took me to the party with you. That was the guy trying to take him to the nightclub. That's huh? correct. He goes, you made me, almost got me. You're the one who used to make fun of my religion. You used to say you're too extreme. What do you mean we're going to go back to paradise? Or there's going to be a hellfire. You're the one who used to crack jokes with me about religion. You're that, you're that guy. And then, now imagine this guy who's in Jannah, looking at this and saying, oh, thank God I didn't listen to you. Because for a second there, I was thinking about it. Right? So he, now the window's closed. But this guy has just seen hellfire. Do you think he's shocked and horrified? He would be. Even though he's in Jannah, he just saw hellfire. So he comes back into Jannah, and it's like he just got here for the first time. The words in the Qur'an are amazing. Are we not going to die anymore? Really? But wait, he, he already knew that. He's in Jannah. But when he saw a glimpse of hellfire, the most beautiful thing he could appreciate about Jannah, first and foremost, like it's a re reintroduction to Jannah, what's the first thing he says? We're not going to die anymore. Except that first death we already tasted. You know, and that's, then the second thing he appreciates, well, I want you to imagine what this is. The second thing he says that he loves about Jannah. Now imagine, trees, mansions, friends, waterfall, all the food you want, amazing things around him. And what's the number two thing? First thing, we're not going to die anymore. What's the number two thing he says? This is the most amazing thing ever. Number two reason, we're not going to be tortured. There's no more pain. That's the second thing he appreciates. Why? Because he just saw what pain looks like. SubhanAllah, as Jannah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. You know. Someone just came to my mind before we answered some of the questions. Someone from the outside, you know, everything makes sense in Islam, you know, but certain people are trying to confuse people to get them off that path of reaching, of submitting to the Creator. So they throw out certain allegations against Islam, a lot of false things, statements. And one of them is that, I mean, look, your God is just creating this paradise and all you guys are just seeking pleasure. It's all about pleasure. And have you heard this argument? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure what, how, what do you say about this? Well, I say lots of things about that. So, <laughs> that's the first thing I say about that. So there's pleasure. You run after pleasure here and you're telling me I'm a criminal because I'm running uh, after pleasure that God gives me for earning good deeds. And pleasure is something Allah put inside the human. Do you deny there's a, such a thing as a pursuit of pleasure? Nobody does. Everybody's looking for pleasure in this world. God is just telling me, put the brakes on, act ethically, and act decently in this world, and I will, all the things you held yourself back from, I will let you have. I say, why not? I used to, they used to argue that Islam is, you know, you might have a younger audience, but Islam offers such sexual rewards in paradise. That's one of the things, yes. You know, and it's, you know, these beautiful women and this and that. I say to you, you have a young man who goes to college in this country, who goes to campus in the middle of the summer. He sees half-naked women all around him, and he guards his eyes. He doesn't make, they make small talk with him, he doesn't make small talk back. He knows, he keeps telling himself, Allah's got better for me, Allah's got better for me, Allah's got better for me. She looks beautiful, but I'm not going to look. I, I can't. I, can't. I'm, I know Allah has better. I know, you know how hard that is for a young man to do? And Allah at the end of the day says, bravo, you did well, you know what, you, you deserve something. Everything you've held yourself back from, here you go. It is not that we get these, you know, lustful rewards in paradise. It's actually that you guarded yourself against the most strongest urge a man can have. How many psychologists talk about how many times a man thinks about sex in a day? You know? I mean, some even count like every 30 seconds or every 40 seconds or something. It's this, crazy. This was psychologists are telling Psychologists, 30, 40, 60, 2 minutes, even 2 minutes, that's insane. How much this thought runs in the mind of a person? How much it can? And add to that, we're living in a time where pornographic images, filthy ads, shameless is constantly being bombarded in our face. How much even more? And in the face of all of that, a man guards his chastity, a woman guards herself. Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they be given the best reward? The most beautiful spouse 
ever imaginable. Why shouldn't they be given that? They'll both have whatever their hearts desire. Whatever their hearts Man desire. Man and woman. A anything they want, they can have in Jannah. That's correct. Okay. So and if you, know, if you think, well, what I'm going to want is going to be evil. Evil itself is removed from your heart. Evil so whatever you want will be good anyway. Whatever you want is good in and of itself and you will be so pleased with it. Because when I say good, it doesn't just mean it will be boring. It means it will be good and it will be pleasing to you and good for you. How many things in this world are pleasing to people but they're not good for them? People find pleasure in drugs, don't they? Yes. But they die from them too. Mm -hmm. People find pleasure in alcohol, they get sick from it too. They get into car accidents from it too. Pleasure, something pleasurable and something good for you is never the same, except in Jannah. In Jannah it's going to be good for you and pleasurable for you, both at the same time. How about seeing the face of our Lord? Is that one of the things that also... That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate. That's seeing the ultimate. Allah, our Creator. I'll give you a, a, a comparison. I know Allah is the highest comparison, but you know, if you're just a small employee in this huge company with hundreds of thousands of workers, you just started working there as an intern, you'll never see the CEO. The CEO is on the news. You know, you work at a post office means you work for the government. You're never going to see the president. But imagine you got invited to the White House. The post office worker, the clerk, got invited to the White House. And he's got a private one-on-one -on -one meeting. And instead of you extending your hand, the president extends his hand and says, welcome. He honors you. And then he pours a drink for you. How honored would you feel? Oh my God, what are you doing? For me? That's a human being that we think has honor. Now imagine, the slave of Allah among billions of slaves on this earth, from the beginning of humanity to the end of it. How insignificant would he be before Allah? And yet Allah says, Salamun qawla min Rabbi Rahim. Allah, the, masterful, the merciful master, is going to be saying salam to him. He's going to be saying peace to him. He's, he's saluting him. And then in another place he says, Saqahum rabbuhum sharaban tahura. Their master will give them to drink. Imagine Allah offering you to drink. It's these scenes that are described in Jannah, they're, they're beyond our imagination. But when we hear of these scenes, you know, one time somebody asked me, what's the, what's the big deal about paradise anyway? What do you get? I just told him drinks. <laughs> what's in my mind is Allah giving me drink? What more can I ask for? Amazing. You We're know? Gonna, don't lose your place. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back, God willing, with some more here on The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone There will always be someone that will be there to say something negative. But at the same time, there will be someone there to say something positive also. So just hold on to the rope of Allah. Everything in this universe, rely and need Allah. The Quran says, don't kill women, don't kill children, don't kill the old people, don't attack the civilians. This is what the Prophet Muhammad told us. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that the Prophet never ever start a war against anybody. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your Creator. Back here on the Dean Show, something came I was going to tell you off air, but I thought, you know, why not share it with, with the, uh, our viewers also. I, <laughs> I was thinking, so, inshallah, if we make it to Jannah, if we strive and we do what our Creator wants us to do, and we please Him before we meet Him, and then we're in Jannah, and we can be talking about, remember when we were on the Dean Show, yeah, talking man. about Jannah? <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be, may Allah grant us Jannah, and all those that are striving to, to be good, to be upon good, to please the Creator before they meet the Creator, 
and to do His will, not their desires. And we, I mean, we can't. We got to tell the truth. We said we're going to answer some questions. But I got taken away with the topic, Jannah. I know. I, know. I, lo I love talking about it. So, and hopefully, inshallah, the, some some of these questions now can be already answered because the person who's saying I want to be religious, but something is stopping me. Hopefully, they heard about yeah, Jannah. Maybe it's motivation. This would be a motivation. Maybe it's now. bad company. Maybe uh -huh. it's laziness. Maybe it's your addiction to entertainment. Turn the thing off. Erase the games off your phone, for God's sake. Get, get a life, really. Well, people are so addicted to entertainment now. And then they say, I can't feel anything in prayer. Well, what a surprise. You have to get off of the screen. You just have to get off. You know, it's ironic. We're going to be on the screen. But if you're going to be on the screen, be, some, be there for something productive. You get motivated to play the Xbox and then win the game and beat everybody at it. Yep. Right? And then you turn into a, a couch potato at the same time. It, takes, it makes you less of a human. It really mm. does. I mean, the only thing you can compare people playing video games, what, what other creature can sit in the same place for hours and hours and hours and not move? What animal on the earth can do that? Even a snail is slowly trying to move from its position, <laughs> right? This is a really pathetic state for a person to be in, yeah. to sit for two and a half hours before a movie. And the only time the muscle moves is for a popcorn to go into the mouth, right? Yeah. You know? This, so, it, what a surprise you're not motivated. You know, this, this is one thing. Bad company is another. A company that's in itself addicted to entertainment, what's it going to do for you? You have to be around people that are intellectually stimulating, that are doing good things around you. And, and a big thing also is to not be alone, especially for young people. When you're alone, you are shaitan's lunch. You're done. You're going to end up doing the wrong thing, I guarantee you. You need to be around in a safe environment. If you want to be alone, go to the masjid and be alone. Go to the masjid. Go sit in the library. Don't be alone. Don't be alone, especially not in your home. But you have an internet connection at home, I don't need to say more. Don't be cruising for a bruising, is that saying? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they said that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you get motivated and you win the NBA championships, you put your mind in it, and now you're like Michael Jordan and you win the game and you sit there wasting your time. Okay, you get motivated to get a diploma, right? Even a GED, you get mm -hmm. motivated, right? You get motivated to go chase that lady or that man. What about motivation to seek the pleasure of the one who created you? You know, this, this question was asked also by one of your other uh, writers. I can't find a balance between this world and the next, deen and uh, dunya and akhirah. I said there is no struggle. Everything we do in this world is for the akhirah if your intention is right. If you're going to work for the right reasons. If you're staying away from evil deeds. If you're remembering Allah when you're supposed to. If you're eating what you're supposed to eat. If you're saying what you're supposed to say. You can live in this world and have a great time. And still learn your jannah. Allah doesn't want you to have a horrible time in this world. You know, we, we, I don't know why we have this concept that we have to kind of cut ourselves off from this world to earn Jannah. No, 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 no. You have to make the most of this world to earn Jannah. We have very little time on this earth. I mean, most of my, half of my life is spent sleeping. And the, uh, the, the few hours that I'm awake, take away the time I have to relieve myself, get dressed for work, stay in commute to the job, put in the eight hours at work. And come back, what do I have, two, three hours of free time, technically free time, that I actually have some control over? How about I make the most of that free time? You know, that, that could change my life. Those few hours that you have free after work, or that commute to work instead of listening to useless news, you know, about the weather and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. How about you listen to something productive in that time? Listen to some Qur'an, listen to something that will increase your knowledge. Listen to you know, a good discussion that will help you understand things better. Memorize du'as at that time. Do something more productive. And in, the, in your free time, do, do good things. Make a routine out of going to the masjid regularly. You know, every isha, you catch every isha. Before you start your work day, you catch every fajr in the masjid. Add some small good routines in your life and how much good will come out of your life is amazing. Another of your listeners asked, how can I improve my character? Step one, do no harm. Stop doing bad things. Don't talk about adding good deeds until you get rid of bad deeds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't talk about giving a patient medicine until you stop the bleeding first. It doesn't make any sense. You know, so you got to stop the entertainment addiction. You got to stop the, the, the watching the filth. You got to stop. You got to start lowering your eyes when you're walking down the street because you're becoming less of a human every time you stare at a woman and you stare at her like she's a piece of, a piece of meat, like she's an animal. That just means you've lost respect for a fellow human being. That's all, that's all that means. Mm -hmm. To you, that's nothing, nothing but you're looking at her like a, 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 an ape looks at like a female ape. You know, like a dog looks at a female dog. That's all you've turned into an animal. 
regain your humanity first and then embellish, beautify your life with good deeds. Do simple, small things. Get perfect your prayer, memorize a few supplications, try to you know, uh, be honest in your workplace, be kind to your mother. These are not complicated things. This is what the Creator wants from us. That's all but, He wants. But if someone says, why? Why does He want this from me? What, what is it? Is this benefiting Him? That's a great question. Um, everything Allah wants from us, his, his, one of His names is Al-Ghani. Ghani means someone who doesn't need anything. And he told us that in, in an ayah in which he basically told us to do certain things. And he said, ghani, And he's free of need. Wantumul fuqara, you're the ones that are bankrupt. Now, in that ayah, he doesn't need anything and we need everything because we're bankrupt. And then he told us to do a few good deeds. And if you do a few good deeds, he will make you ghani. He'll make you free of need. He'll give you, shower you with blessings. Not only are good deeds beneficial to us because they in and of themselves are like medicine, but they bring with them bonuses in this world and the next world. You be kind to your mother and you never know. You've been looking for a job forever and you're also mean to your mom. You start being kind to your mother and mysteriously you get a call back. I want you to come in for an interview. The blessings of being kind to your mother. One good deed will open up other doors for you. This is what Allah does in this world. Whoever becomes conscious of Allah, يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا He starts making doors open for them, making a way out for them. وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسَبْ He starts providing him from where he couldn't even imagine. All because this person became conscious of Allah. Right? That's all Allah is asking us of. And He's asking us for us to make our life better. Last comment, Allah says, you know, people say, what does God want? It's a really fundamental question. What does God want? There's, an, there's a few ayat that tell us the answer. One of them is, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah wants to lighten your burden. And the, man, and human, the human being was created weak. You think you're making your life easier by partying? You're making it harder. I want ease for you. I want to take the burden off of you. You just don't understand it. You're too weak. You know, subhanAllah. So, paradise, that's the GPS, what we should have it set for. Get there. The, 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 the game plan is obeying God before we meet God. And obeying Him is only going to bring goodness in our lives. Any, any closing comments, anything else? We have to wrap it up. That's it. What, do you, what else for the viewers now? Uh, for my viewers uh, and the viewers of the show, first of all, congratulations on this fantastic effort. I really, really respect this effort and I, I, I recommend it all the time. And may Allah bring a lot of good from it to, to people all over the world and accept all of the, these deeds from us. Amen. For every second that is viewed, may the viewer be rewarded. May the, the people Amen. that are involved in this program be rewarded. Inshallah ta'ala, this becomes our ticket to paradise. Ameen, and ameen. We collect the checks later, <laughs> inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so that, that's one thing I really wanted to share. The second thing I wanted to share is um, that you know, this kind of uh, effort, it should inspire even the viewers that are in our audience to become more motivated to do good deeds. How small efforts, th things like YouTube, how they've transformed the world, right? Things like small things like Twitter, where you just put a little hashtag and can create revolutions in the world now. So don't underestimate the value of small deeds. You might think it's just an hour worth of effort, 20 minutes worth of effort, and out, you know, but when Allah empowers that deed, it can change the world. You know, so don't underestimate the power of the small things that, that you do. And ask Allah to empower them with, with His barakah, with His blessings. Amen. Thank you very much. May Allah, Allah, the creator of the heavens earth, reward you. Thank Allah you very Allah much. Allah. My pleasure being here. And that was my brother and your brother. Noman Ali Khan giving some great advice, a great description of Jannah, paradise, what every human being should be striving for before you meet your Creator, work to please your Creator, and you have one shot to get it right. This is the test. It's the test of life. And God Almighty, He sent the verbatim Word of God, the Quran, that's the instruction manual, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's all there. It's all there. So don't waste time. Get to know this beautiful way of life. And then you'll see the beautiful fruits that will come from doing this way of life. Islam. Submission to the one God. And this is how you get peace. Pick up the verbatim word of God. Call us at 1-800-662-ISLAM. Until next time, peace be unto you.